What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to put together a WebKit web view in your app. So here's the app that we're going to be putting together with this button. And when we tap it, we get a web view that pops up that's based on WebKit. Uh, we, of course, have our done and reload buttons here. And we can also pass in a title so we can dismiss it. We can also swipe to dismiss it. So fairly common component in most apps. We're going to make it a reusable component with its own controller uh, with a reload button as well. So for whatever reason, if your user wants to reload, they choose to, they can. And of course, it supports light mode and dark mode as every component nowadays should. So we'll do all of that and a little bit more in this video. So make sure you destroy the like button as always. Let's go ahead and make sure that YouTube needs to fix that like button. Let's hit it that many times. Hit subscribe if you're a consistent returning viewer. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's get into some WebKit web view. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template here and let me go ahead and call this project uh, my web kit view. Make sure your language is Swift, interface is uh, storyboard, and lifecycle is UI kit. Let's go ahead and continue and save this project. And first and foremost, before we get into the code, let's pick a simulator in our list here. Go with the Pro Max and hit the run button to get the simulator nice and ready for our code. So we should see it popping up here in just a moment. Hopefully, if this is the right simulator. Sometimes it loves to be slow when I do videos. There it goes. Okay, cool. So let's go to the view controller. And what we're going to do is actually create just a button in here. And tapping the button is going to present our web view. And we're going to have a dedicated uh, controller for the web view. So it's a reusable component. So better design. You can use it in more places in your app than just having a one-off web view. So let's set up that button real quick in here. So it'll be a very simple vanilla UI button. And we're gonna create it in this anonymous closure fashion, like so. We'll return it. Let me go ahead and set a title on it of show web page. And that's gonna be for normal. Let me also set a background color. And finally, a title color. We'll say white for normal. And let's go ahead and add this as a sub view. When we tap on the button, we of course want something to happen. So we're gonna add a target to it with a uh, action. And this will be did tap button. And the event is going to be touch up inside. And of course, let's go ahead and create that did tap button function down here. We need to annotate it Objective C and stub it out just like that. Before we run it to see our button, let's give it a frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a frame of CD rect with a X and Y of 00, 220 by 50 for width and height respectively. And let's just go ahead and center it so it's not in the top left of our screen by updating the center property on the button. Go ahead and hit Command R to build and run and you'll see your awesome looking button right here. So my simulator is actually in dark mode, so let me hit Command Shift A to get it into light mode. So cool, web view stuff. Let's create our new controller. So we're gonna come in here, right click and hit new file. We want a Cocoa Touch class, and we're gonna create a new subclass of a UI view controller, and we're gonna call it web view controller. It's going to be in Swift, no storyboard file, or nib rather. Go ahead and create it, and let's get started by deleting this commented out code. And we can actually get rid of this code as well. 
And the first thing we want to do in here is import WebKit. And WebKit, of course, is where we're going to pull out the actual WK web view from, which is going to power our uh, you know, entire controller, more or less. So we're going to say private let web view is a WK web view, which is a WebKit view. And it's similar to the button, we're going to create it in uh, this anonymous closure fashion. So we're going to say WK web view. We're going to create it with a frame of zero and a configuration of configuration. We're going to create the configuration right above. And the configuration is where you basically define uh, little uh, preferences about the web view, things like if uh, JavaScript can be used or loading behavior and things like that. So we're just going to set JavaScript enabled since it's the most common uh, use case. So we got to create a pref preferences up here, which is a WK uh, preferences. And off the preferences, we can set JavaScript enabled just like that. So the JavaScript also uh, can open Windows uh, because JavaScript obviously opening multiple tabs, but we won't worry about that now. Let's go ahead and create that. And finally here, we want to return said web view. And in view to load, we want to add the web view, just like that. So let's see, web view, web view, preferences, JavaScript enable is true. It's yelling at us because it's deprecated in 14. So there's WK web page preferences. So it looks like in iOS 14, it has changed, which is news to me. So let's see, let's learn this together. So WK web, web page preferences. Uh, so let's see what that's all about. So let's say WK web page preferences. And it looks like it's called allows JavaScript. So it's gonna start complaining because that doesn't exist. So there's allows uh, content JavaScript. And that also is a Boolean. So we're going to update to that and make sure it's set to true. And let's see what this is complaining about here. Can't assign web page preferences to this. So I assume there's a web page preferences on here. Default web page preferences is preferences. So cool. That's how it has changed on iOS 14. So interesting news to me. So now we want to add the web view as a sub view to our view controllers view. And we want to override view did layout sub views. And we want to set the web views frame to be the entirety of this controller. And the other thing we want to do is we want to be able to pass in a URL into the controller to obviously load in the web views. So we're going to say uh, init with a URL. And this is going to be a URL. And we're going to say self.url is URL. Let's create a URL property on here. And then we want to say super dot init uh, with a nib name and a bundle. And let's see, we also need to bring in the required initializer for the controller. If you don't, it'll give you an error and basically ask you to bring it in. We're not going to actually implement it, which is why we did a fatal error, but you do need to bring this in. And uh, once you have done that, you can say web view load request, rather load, web view, load. And this takes a URL request and we can create it with our URL property that we passed in to our controller, just like that. So how do we actually go ahead and use this? Um, let's actually add one more thing to this initializer here before we do that. And it's gonna be a title. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the title to title self.title rather. And now let's take a look at using it. So let's go back to our other view controller here. Let me actually drag that up. So in this view controller, when we tap on the button, we're going to create one of these controllers. And it's going to be a web view controller with a URL and a title. So let's say the title is Google. And the URL is going to be a URL. And the reason, of course, we have to put it as an optional bind with the guard is because the URL initializer returns a optional. Let's go ahead and do that. Do that like that. And we're going to actually embed this view controller in a navigation controller. 
So I'm going to say UI navigation controller. We're going to initialize with a root view controller, and that's going to be VC. And finally, we're going to say present nav VC animated true. So quite a bit of code. Let's go ahead and hit command R. Let's see if I mess anything up. Looks like we have an error up here, which is not good. So let's go ahead and see what this is all about. So let's see, this is saying we can't obviously assign self before we call super dot init. So let's move that bef uh, after super init uh, because title is uh, a property off of self rather where URL is the initialized property. So let's go ahead and run this now and we should get the app running. And if I tap this, you'll see we get the controller popping up with the title and the web view loaded. One thing that was kind of weird is there was a delay in the way the UI looked and that's because we never set a background color here. So go ahead and set a background color to be system background and hit command R once more. And let me put this in dark mode so we can see it better. And we pop it up, you'll see it's actually so fast that you couldn't even, couldn't even see the background. Uh, I think you can see it for like a split second there. But let's also go ahead and add a done button and a reload button up here. And let's take a look at what uh, that entails. So let me go ahead and create a function called configure buttons. And we are going to create that function here and say navigation item dot left bar button is a UR bar button item with a title. This will be done, style will be done, target itself, and this will be uh, did tap done. And I'm going to be lazy and copy and paste this and create a new function. And I'm going to be lazy once more and copy and paste this and change this to be navigation item dot right bar button item. And this one's going to be a little different. So let's just recreate this. It's going to be a bar button item. And we're going to create this with a system item. And the one we want is uh, refresh, target is self, and action is did tap refresh. Whoops, we don't need the parentheses there. Let's go ahead and create this function as well. Just like that. Let me go ahead and fix this, just like that. And this one's pretty simple. We're simply going to call uh, load again for the uh, web view. And we'll pass in the URL that we have as a property here, uh, which is saved right up here. And for this one, we're simply going to say dismiss animated true completion is nil. So go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And if we hit this to present it, we get this done button here, tapping it dismisses it and hitting this reload button uh, actually reloads the page. Yep. You can see it pops back up. It's just kind of instant where you can't really visually tell. So you can of course customize this way more where you can have even like a search bar up here where the user can type and change uh, you know, which website they're on effectively making uh, a mini version of Safari. But that's how you bring a basic web view into your app. So oftentimes you use for an about page, a contact page, terms of service, privacy policy, things like that. Uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. So if you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, make sure you destroy that like button as always. Helps out the video and the channels at large quite a bit. Comment any questions, suggestions, feedback down below. I love hearing from you guys. Hit subscribe if you enjoyed the video and have been following along for the other Swift videos. And the last question I'll pose to you guys is, I've been thinking about doing uh, some more face-to-face uh, -face videos, less code and more of my thoughts on things like uh, UI kit versus Swift UI and kind of interview tips and algorithms in iOS and uh, best design practices like MVC versus MVVM, things of that nature. A lot of these questions that I think a lot of folks in the iOS community uh, ask and not many people talk about. So curious to know your guys' thoughts on that. Would you find it interesting? Is it uh, something you have a question about that you'd like to get my thoughts on? Um, and, you know, I really love for it to be a conversation or less of a me lecturing anybody. So definitely share those comments down below. That all said, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.